I'm just not sure the right thing to do is go jumping fences this season. Ollie, thanks so much for coming on uh, the Let's Talk Racing podcast. I remember having you on, uh, I think it was about two years ago. And at the time, you've been training for, for four or five years and things have been going really well. The last two years, things have still progressed, hopefully like the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel. Um, how would you sum up those last couple of years? Yeah, they've been um, they've been good years, Josh. Um, obviously, still looking to, to improve the quality the whole time. We've obviously got nice, nice bump horse coming through the, the whole time as well. So... Uh, yeah, listen, like everyone, you're, you're always looking for that champion. You're always looking for that horse that's going to f- fly the flag for for your stable. And uh, hopefully we've got one or two nice horses coming through. Yeah, I'm very, very excited about it. The podcast are huge fans of of, uh, of Ollie Murphy and Warren Chase. And even got the cap on today, sporting the team. Uh, yeah, looking forward to, to seeing what can come this season. And we're going to talk about it over the next 10, 15 minutes, if you don't mind. Um, First of all, last year you made a decision to use Sean Bowen a lot more. Um, it seems to have paid off. He's flying in the championship. He seems to be riding plenty of winners for you. How crucial has he been to the progress over the last year? Yeah, listen, he's he's very good, Josh. Um, I had a very good jockey before in, in Aidan Coleman, but at the time Aidan had uh, loyalties elsewhere as, as as well as to me. And I was just kind of getting bigger and I kind of got owners from... From, uh, from from top to bottom, really, and I just kind of needed someone that I was going to get a bit of continuity with that was going to ride um, in an Auto 100 and ride a nice horse on a Saturday as well. So, uh, listen, we still use Aiden um, at, at, at times, but Sean's here now, and he's my my number one, and uh, he'll ride whatever he can ride now, and, uh, yeah, it's great having him on board. It's it's an exciting venture to be on as well with his, with his championship trail, and uh, we'll do all we can to try and get him over the line. A tremendously good jockey. Um, does that mean he has a slightly even more of an involvement this year compared to last year? I'd say so. Um, I'd say so. Obviously, with uh, Max McNeil now not having a, a retained jockey, that's another six or seven horses he's able to ride. Um, so, yeah, listen, you'll um, you'll see Sean Byrne riding an awful lot of horse for me this year. Um, he's a big involvement in the yard, along with a lot of other good young up and coming jockeys. Um, that have been with me a while but uh yeah he's a, a great lad to have around and uh we're, we're very lucky as well as my owners to, to, to have his services when when called upon the last time i was at warren chase was before the cheltenham festival and there were two really exciting novices going into it and that was strong leader and chasing fire i remember actually having a bit of a debate with you of who i thought was the best even though it, it didn't mean anything at the time um i i, I was very very make, making a strong case for strong leader you must have been thrilled with his second Aintree and his run in the Supreme, it's still very creditable. Yeah, um, he, he ran okay in the Supreme. Um, I was actually disappointed with both my horse in the Supreme. I think they're both a lot better than that run. Um, albeit strong leader went and, and, and ran a ran a great race in Aintree in the in the two mile grade one. Um, I don't think he was at his best that day either, and I'd love to have another go at it and hope he'd go through the race a little bit better than he went through it that day. But uh, yeah, he ran very well. Um, actually, galloped yesterday. And hopefully he can just take that next step up the ladder to, to tackle kind of graded company and in open company now over hurdles. It's interesting that that decision to, to keep him over hurdles, I think many thought after his run at Aintree that a step up and trip and maybe a fence might see the very best of him. I know that the anti-post markets for the Cheltenham races next year definitely thought that way. Was there ever a consideration to go over fences? Did you school him? What was the thought process in keeping him over hurdles? He was very, very unnatural to to start. Um, I mean, extremely unnatural. Probably as unnatural a horse I've had come through the place since I've started training. Right. Um, yeah. An awful lot of work has gone into him. Laura Collett's done done, done an awful lot with his horse now. And uh, I'm just not sure the right thing to do is go jumping fences this season. Um, listen, if things go peaked on this first couple of hurdle runs now, we might... Uh, reassess that plan and, and have a look at jumping offence before Christmas. But uh, plans are firmly to stay over hurdles, um, kind of feel we've kind of a little bit of unfinished business um, and untapped potential jumping hurdles still. And uh, his sectional timings over two miles were actually very, very good. Um, so I actually do think he's got plenty of toe. The one race he didn't go through very well was uh, his, his running entry. Um, and apart from that, He's actually kind of jumped and travelled real good over two, so I, I don't see any reason why two miles is going to be a be an issue. Um, the plan is to to get a foster as the Welsh champion hurdles, so that's where he's going to start off all being well, um, and then we'll take the rest of the year from there. 
He's on an intriguing mark as well. It, I think it's one four three. So you've kind of got the the option to to step up into greater company if it's to to go and win the Welsh Champion Hurdle, but also stick down the, the high end handicaps and the premium handicaps. So it's a nice luxury to have. Interesting, you mentioned there sectional times. Is that something you look into? Uh, no, it's not actually. Um, just a couple of people that are a little bit sharper than me that do look into it have, <laughs> right. have mentioned it to me a couple of times. Um, so he's a funny horse. He trains at home like a very slow horse. Um, like he's a like he's a three miler, but uh, actually when he won his bumper at Warwick and he kind of went round the bridle that day, turned in Adrian Heskin actually rode him, he gave him a kick in the belly and he he took off. He shot me more than anyone, um, but he actually has got plenty of boots. So uh, yeah, we'll start him off over two miles. Listen, could he go two and a half miles in time? Most definitely, but uh, we'll start him off at two and see where we go. There's another rec- recruit in the yard. I think it's Chasing Glance of the same silks. Yeah, he won a won a point point yeah. first out for, for for Tom and Jean Rellis. Um, He's had a, a little wind operation, um, so yeah, he'll start off in a, in a maiden hurdle in in in, in eight, eight to ten weeks' time. He's a little bit behind the others, but uh, yeah, nice big look, good looking horse. Um, Jet Black, the same as Strong Leader, and uh, listen, if he's half as good as him. The owners will have plenty of fun with him as well. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, going back to Chasing Fire, then is the plan to to go chasing with him, stay hurdling? What 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 do you see his season looking like? Yeah, I've kind of toed and froed the idea, Josh. To be honest, um, again, I believe there's a very good handicap in him off his mark. Um, I still stand by this horse as much as I do any horse in the yard. He's a, a phenomenal workhorse. Um, he definitely didn't run his race in the Supreme and he definitely didn't run his race over two and a half miles. His last run in, in Cheltenham, I'd say he was as flat as a pancake, but uh, yeah, he's in very good form. Um, he scored very well. And the plan is to, to go and jump a fence with him. Um, he's a piece of work off a run. So I'd say he'll, probably start off there in, in a fortnight three weeks time somewhere and uh and see how we get on yeah Aiden's obviously had a, had a had a relationship with that horse but just with Aiden being out injured now it just kind of throws things up in the air so uh listen Sean Byrne obviously obviously ride him there in a fortnight's time and uh we'll get going with over fences and, and and see how we are uh, how we get on I think that whole division is very interesting the two mile British novice chasers um to two to two and a half because Constitution Hill obviously stays hurdling um and there's no real standout other than him if he was to go chasing. So it definitely opens it up to an improver and a horse that chasing fires ability that he's shown early on in his career. Maybe he might step into that into that and, and run in those graded races, which would be very exciting. Um, a horse that I've always had a, a strong love for at Warren Chase is Godante. Went off favourite or almost favourite Aintree under Jamie Codd. Things didn't go to plan that day. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I thought turning in it win a minute. Um, you just kind of sneak into the race, and and yeah, I thought it was going to be a a typical Jamie Cod ride, but uh, yeah. he actually jumped jumped the third last, and uh, and his win went Josh. So uh, he's since undergone a wind operation. Um, this horse hasn't reached the heights which possibly he should have done thus far, but he's had an awful lot of uh, of issues which wouldn't have been documented. Um, he, he he had a little hairline fracture to a pelvis. He then had a schooling accident um, at home, and just things just didn't go right for him. Um, and yeah, ba- basically he ha- hasn't had the rub of the green. He's in great form. He actually galloped yesterday morning um, away from home. I'm definitely giving him a run over hurdles, just not the edge of him. Um, and just hopefully realise that he can he can breathe. And and then I'd imagine we'll be jumping a fence. But uh, I'd like to think he's going to improve plenty. Um, he's certainly off a, off a favourable mark and uh, yeah, I'm just hoping this could be his year. Fingers crossed. I think it's 126, which is very workable, the the, the handicap mark. Yeah, most definitely. He's he, he's a horse who's definitely definitely handicapped to be a lot better than, than his current mark, but he's just had his issues and having a clean run with him is just very important and hopefully those li- there will be little issues, you know, but hopefully they're all behind him and uh, we can kind of yeah, get to the bottom of, of, of finding them, all that ability to yard this year. A yard favourite in the same silks is, is brewing up a storm. I was when when you first said that Strong Leader was going to stay over hurdles, I was semi worried that they might be bumping into each other throughout. But now Strong Leader is going to stay at two miles. Um, is brewing up a storm kind of going to go through the the usual races that he does? That being the entry starting point, maybe the Rail Kill, the National Spirit, something like that. Exactly, um, and obviously that race back at Lingfield, which he won two years ago. So uh, mm. he's a fairly easy horse to to place, Josh. Um, He's been an absolute star for, for myself and, and, and Barbara Hester. Um, I must admit, probably bar training, it should be to win a grade one. Him winning a second national spirit gave me as big a buzz and thrill now as I've had in a, 
hadn't a long time. Um, his season hadn't gone to plan up until then. He had another major wind operation. It was very tight getting him to Fontwell. And uh, yeah, to turn in and, and put performance in like that was was, was fantastic. And uh, yeah, he's been a real flag bearer for me. He's obviously not getting any younger, but uh, he's in great form. We'll start him off at entry again and, uh, and, and, and see how we get on. What I love about the the, the Fontwell cameras is, is when he's flying up the hill, you can almost see you on the far side. I think you can see you on the far side celebrating. Do, do you ever get any practice in with those celebrations? Because you seem to be absolutely mastering them, especially the running and going along with him. No, unfortunately not. No, uh, <laughs> I always uh, I always watch my runners out on the track on my own or, or, or with some from my team. It's, it's funny. It's kind of half superstition. I've never, ever watched a race in the stands. If you see me in the stands now, you'll know it's not fancied. Um, <laughs> But, uh, oh yeah, listen, you've got to enjoy the good days, haven't you? And uh, certainly try and do that. There is. And, and with the goals flying in at Villa Park, I'm sure there's some celebrations you can take some uh, influence from. Um, the big thing on, on this podcast is we like to touch on young horses and, and looking at the horses for next season. Thank you very much for the, for the booklet that, that I picked up on, on the golf day. Looking through it, it looks like a, a really exciting team of young horses and, and horses last year that won bumpers as well. If you don't mind, just flying through them. Um, little Miss Dante, she was so impressive at, at Southall. Obviously, the close relation to, to go Dante. You've always had her um, well up in your estimations as well. She, I noticed that she was um, entered for entry, didn't run. Was that just a, a conscious effort to, to maybe mind her and, and keep her going along slightly slower? Yeah, I probably didn't think that was the right thing to do, um, Josh, to be honest. Um, she's a lovely filly, jumped very, very well. Um, Sean actually jumped yesterday morning. She's ready to start off now in, in, in a fortnight's time as soon as the ground eases. Philly, I like. I train a lot of cave towers, and I really strongly believe they they improve with age. You know, so uh, yeah, I'm yeah I'm looking forward to her now. Um, we'll start off against her own sex and and, and see how we get on. But uh, it wouldn't be beyond the all rounds possibility now if she was able to pick up a bit of black type somewhere. Um, and she'll definitely make a chase for as well. So uh, obviously, being a cave tower out, whoops, today she's qualified for all these these bonuses as well, which. Um, yeah, if you win a few of them, though, it, it, it certainly uh, yeah, it certainly helps the bank balance. I, I can imagine. Fingal Bridge as well won a, a Chepstow bumper by 18 months. I know that didn't tell the full story because the Evan Williams horse came down late on. Um, but he looks really exciting too. Very good horse, Josh. He's going to miss the first half of the season. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard stone, really, because he's not going to be ready till after Christmas. Um, so I don't really know whether to jump a hurdle with him or what to do. Um there's only point giving him another run in the bumper, but uh, yeah, he's a horse that, that, that I, hold, I hold in an extremely high regard, um, a real dour stayer, um, but yeah, we won't see him for the first half of the season, and uh, I'm just kind of turning and throwing of, of what to do. I'll have to obviously speak with, with Max Gregg and, and Ella McNeil and, and, and make a decision, but uh, yeah, he won't be seen before Christmas, um, and it's then whether you go and kick on have three runs over hurdles and lose your, lose your novice status or whether you give them a run and a bump maybe a, in that listed race at Newbury or something and just bite the bullet and, and jump hurdles next season. So, sorry to hear that. Um, me and Andrew were, were sat on the sofa watching a, a quite a low-key card at Weatherby and the bumper came along and as an Ollie Murphy favourite so obviously we have uh, interest and he goes by the name of Indivar Blue. I didn't expect him to win as he did and it got me very very giddy for his future prospects. How's he doing and how's he summered and, and is novice hurdling the plan? He will start off in a, in a two mile maiden hurdle. Um, he shocked me more than anyone else that day. Um, he was one of those horses that I'd tra obviously train a lot of horse for Diane and Graham Waitley and unbelievable people to train for. They put no pressure on you whatsoever. They love buying unraced horses. Um, some work out, some don't. It's the way they like buying their horses. And uh, big backward horse, need a bit of time, was kind of put on the back burner. I actually took him away one day and uh, galloped him. And unfortunately, the horse that was galloping alongside him had a, had a fatal injury while he was while he was galloping. So he ended up not wor working at all. And he got to the top of the gallop and uh, she said to my assistant, Jared Tumulty, do you know what? Forget galloping again. We'll, ju we'll just run him. I'll ring Graham, tell him there's been a disaster galloping-wise, and uh, we'll give him a run. If he goes and finishes midway, then grand, you know. Um, not that I have any of my bumble horses kind of revved to the high hills, um, but he was certainly going right to the races undercooked. I, I was actually at market raising that day. I had four winners that day, and uh, I remember under the bookmakers and saying this thing 11 to 10. I, I was watching with my father, and I said, this is the worst 11 to 10 shot you've ever seen in your life. 
um, because I knew how kind of little it done. And then the way he won and Sean rang me after, he was like, Christ, like, where have you, where have you been hiding this lad? But uh, yeah, he was very raw, very green, won extremely well, didn't pull him up till halfway down the back straight. And uh, yeah, he looks a lovely, lovely horse, Josh. And he summered really well, schooled great, start from a two-month maiden hurdle on a big track somewhere. And hopefully um, he could be a very nice horse. <laughs> it's a racing cliche um, that is often used when the, the best horses are the ones you least expect. But going to, to a, a card like that, a Weatherby, with a horse who, who you, you had a reasonable opinion of, but then he goes and absolutely hacks up, must have given you some buzz coming back. Certainly. I, I try and send horses. My, my, my bumble horses tend to run very well, not because they're galloped hard. They just see a lot before they go racing. They'll have been on grass. They'll have got on the lorry four or five times. They'll have gone and galloped away from home a few times. You know, so they just kind of, they, they've seen a bit about the world before they go racing. That's kind of why they tend to, and obviously my father buys a, an, a, a nice type of horse. But uh, yeah, they've just seen a lot before they go. This lad kind of hadn't, and that's why he kind of shot me as much. But uh, yeah, he's a lovely horse. Big, he's the most beautiful horse you've ever seen. Um, and uh, yeah, by the, great blue brazil and and just hopefully he could be a nice horse josh you know the future is bright the last horse i wanted to, to talk to you about um is another bumper winner one at market raise and sal carlos i think it was in your your dad's silks um but now changed hands I and mean, you've got uh, jeb mason alex ferguson john hales um and, and others involved in him First of all, we'll talk about the ownership first because I'm a big Man United fan and having Sir Alex Ferguson possibly in Stratford-upon-Avon once upon a time at some point is a very exciting thing. Um, a, can I be your tea boy that day? And two, uh, what does it feel like to have those owners? I know John Hales has had a few with you in the past, but to have Jed Mason and Alex Ferguson as well and, and Driver involved. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, listen, it's great having them in the yard. Um Obviously, my first horse for them, John Hales, and and, and the Hales family have been a been a really good supporter of mine since I since I started training. So, uh, yeah, chuffed that they've that they've bought this lad, um, a horse I think a lot of. Funny actually, my my, my, my dad owns him, and I had so many bumper horses run over Christmas. It was a newcomer's bumper at uh, at Market Raise, and and uh, I wanted to run something in it. He obviously hadn't run. I galloped him, galloped really well, um, and the lads just said. If you want to be double sure, gallop him again. Otherwise, run him, and, and and yeah, he'll run well. So again, probably went to the races undercooked rather than overcooked. And I just loved kind of turning in when Sean sat into him. He just took off. He went ten lengths clear within five strides, and he got a little bit lonely. Then half fell on down. But yeah, nice horse jumps well again by Blue Brazil and a extremely straightforward horse. That's hopefully going to be a be a nice horse for the for the four guys that are involved. Very, very exciting. Thank you so much for, for, for coming on the Let's Talk Racing podcast. Um, I know you're, you're tight for time. A spirit of Kinsale is a horse I want to talk to you about. You had a high opinion of him last year very quickly before you go. Do you still think that he could be exciting this year? Yeah, nice horse. Um, just wasn't the right thing to do running at the back end of last season. Um, had a few little kind of growing pains and little niggly issues. Um, but yeah, he's in good form. Um, We'll start off in a bump before getting novice hurdling. So, uh, yeah, again, Blue Brazil, um, <laughs> another, another awesome looking forward to. And, uh, yeah, nice team of bump horses, nice team of novice hurdlers. Um, and, yeah, it's an uh, exciting time of year that, uh, that every national hunt trainer, owner and, and jockey is kind of looking forward to the next kind of four night, three weeks. Um, yeah, some, some lovely unraced bump horses, some lovely novice hurdlers, some nice novice chasers. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully we can just kind of take that next step up the ladder, Josh, and uh, unearth that, uh, that next star. <laughs>